everyone and welcome back. I'm here today with my Lisbon Digital Nomad house tour. I have never done a house tour before. I meant to do one in Italy, never got around to it. If you don't know, I am a digital nomad. I travel the world with my business in content creation. And for the month of January, I'm living in Lisbon. I am renting a single bedroom in a lovely flat in the beautiful historic Alfama area of Lisbon. and I'm paying 450 euros for the month. I was very lucky to find this place, to be honest. I joined a Facebook group called Lisbon Digital Nomads. You guys know how much I recommend Facebook groups for finding accommodation. I posted that I was gonna be in Lisbon for January and a guy messaged saying that he had a flat in Lisbon that he would be subletting. I came to see the place as soon as I arrived here. I paid him the 450, I paid a little deposit. I feel like if I had had more time to look for a place, perhaps if I was staying for a little bit longer, I could definitely have found a better deal. But I'm very happy with where I'm living. I am sharing my flat with one lovely flatmate called Jane. She's also from the UK. I'm living on the fourth floor of an apartment building and there's no lift. And I hope that maybe some of you watching are also considering coming to Lisbon to do something like I'm doing. I can fully recommend it and I hope that this house tour helps you to get a little bit of an idea of what you could expect by living in Lisbon. If you have lived in Lisbon, please remember to leave a comment and let me know what your experience was like. Was your house anything like the one I'm living in? What was different? What was the same? So let's get into the house tour. So we're starting out the tour probably the opposite way around to what you would have thought because we're starting upstairs. I'm living in quite an old building and historical area. And I'm pretty sure this used to be the attic, but this is where I spend most of my time. This is where I work, this is where I eat, this is where I chill out. First of all, when you walk upstairs, you can see two sofas. This is the boiler that I've had to move because I'm hiding our laundry. But I'm pretty sure this is the attic because this pillar just sort of disrupts the design of the room. But it's nice because you've got this little corner over here, Right now I've put all of my workbooks and my laptop and things and basically my office is just here. And actually, if I just swivel around and show you, there's even a world map over here, which is pretty on brand for me. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean a lot of work. I will sit here normally in the mornings when I'm doing my work, my journaling, eating my breakfast before I even start my day. And I've got the little heater here. Something you should be prepared for about Lisbon is that they don't really have heating, which is fine for most of the year because most of the year it's sunny and beautiful and warm. Let me tell you, even if it is eight degrees, 10 degrees outside, when you don't have heating, sometimes even that can feel a bit chilly. You'll also notice that we hang up our towels across here. Um, you'll see why in a minute but this is the best place to give them some ventilation. To be honest, the place is a little bit damp. It's pretty damp, but I have to show you the best thing about this flat. Show me a better view. I love it when in European towns, you can see how people hand their washing out. I think it adds real character to the city. So now that you've seen our beautiful upstairs area, let me show you the downstairs. So right now I'm standing at the front door, which of course takes you into the hallway when you first step in. The hallway is good because it's got mirrors where I will do my makeup or I'll check if I look okay, maybe before I head out. And it's pretty cute. You don't really get any natural light in this pipe, but you've got some lovely plants over here. You've got this lovely antique dresser, and this is where the modem lives. So this is our internet source. If I'm being completely honest, the internet here isn't fantastic. We did a speed test and the download rate was something like five, and then the upload rate was under 0.5. But the strange thing is that it hasn't really caused me any problems. I've been doing client calls, I've been uploading videos, and I've been okay, but maybe that's because I'm used to the painfully slow internet in Italy. Now, when you're standing in the front door, straight ahead of you, you can see my flatmate's room. She's got the bigger room. And then there is my room. But before we go there, I need to show you the kitchen. 
Our kitchen is pretty small. I think it will be fine for one person, but with two people it can get a little bit cramped. When you come in, the first thing that you see is the sink over here. Decent sized sink, you've got your drying area. The only problem here is that water always seems to go all over the counter, which is really annoying. And since the lighting's not great, as you can see we don't have any windows in here, it can be difficult to tell when it, the surface is actually wet and when it needs drying. And it's just the worst feeling when you forget and you put your hand down and you've got like... We've got our little cooker over here. One thing that I really like about it is that you don't need a lighter to light the gas cooker. It does it automatically, which might be like completely normal to a lot of you. But in my house that I just left in Italy, that was not the case. And in a lot of houses in Europe, to be honest. There's also not a huge amount of storage space for food. We put teas and beans and some other things on here. And we've got a little bit of cupboard space for food as well. But one thing we do have is a very, very big fridge. And this is where we keep the alcohol. And this is our toilet paper. I tidied up a little bit before I started this tour, but what you're seeing is really where things are kept. So it's gonna be, you know, it's authentic and raw. Another feature which I really like is our washing machine. I know that in some parts of the world, you have to be careful when you're looking for a flat to see if there's a washing machine because you can actually end up spending tons of money and tons of time going to the laundrette to get it done. Apparently that's not as common in Portugal, but I'm really happy to have a washing machine all the same. Cleaning supplies, oven, and rubbish bin, which is of mediocre quality. I almost forgot to show you a very exciting part of our kitchen, which is the boiler. It was something which caused a little bit of trouble when I moved in. The boiler wasn't actually working and it was dripping water onto the countertop. So in my second week here, we actually got a brand new boiler and it's just in this cupboard here. Another thing which is a little bit strange about the apartment is that it has one bathroom. Now that's fine, there are only two of us, but it's located right next to the kitchen. This is probably another reason why the um, house is so damp is because our bathroom doesn't actually have a proper ventilation system. Nothing too exciting about the bathroom really. It's definitely not the ideal setup, but the bathroom itself is fine. It's even pretty nice. It just feels a little bit damp. So we've got the sink area, of course, and I've just got my essential things that I keep in here all of the time. And it's got a really lovely long mirror. We don't tend to keep our towels in here for the reason I mentioned earlier, which is ventilation, but I do have my travel towel there at the moment. Of course, we have the famous bidet. These are very common in Europe, and to be honest, it's a pretty hygienic idea but you will find one in many, many mainland European houses. Of course, we have the toilet. I think I don't need to explain anything more about that. And then we've got the shower over here. This appears to be a bathtub, but I really think it's only big enough for a child, so we haven't been taking any baths. Now this thing here is sort of a wooden slat that you can put out to give yourself some grip on the floor just after you've had your shower and to stop your feet from getting mucky on the floor. And I don't think there's much more to be said about that. So my room is directly opposite the kitchen like I showed you earlier. And... I have a very minimalist, simple room. Sometimes I question the price for what I'm actually getting, although you've got to keep in mind I'm getting the whole apartment. Yes, I'm sharing, but I get that lovely upstairs area. When you first come in, the first thing that you will see is my bed. I have a single bed, which has been suiting me just fine. I used to be very picky about only wanting a double bed. But since I'm only here for a month and I've kind of moved past that anyway, it's definitely not a problem. Next to the bed, I've just got some little books here. When I said it was minimalistic, I meant it. I don't have a bedside table or anything. So this is quite funny. I've got my Portuguese book, which is actually written in Italian. So it's for Italian people to learn Portuguese. I've got my workbook. I've got my French novel. And I've got my journal where I write in English. <laughs> Under the bed, I am keeping my hand luggage suitcase. I'm gonna do another video separately about all the things I pack to move around the world. In this bit here, I'm keeping things that I really don't want to lose, like my passport. Then in this main part here, I'm keeping electronics. 
camera lenses, spare batteries, chargers. I've just got a new phone, so right now I'm just put my old phone in here. Any kind of work-related creative things that don't fit in my office upstairs. Now, as you move your way down the room, you can see that I've also got this thing here. This thing here is actually my wardrobe. So what it is, is this kind of standalone black metal frame and it's got these white curtains that come down from it. I've got all of my clothes that I want hung up on hangers here. And then on the shelves, I'm using the top one for kind of toiletries. Use this shelf here for any other vest tops and underwear that aren't on hangers. Here I've got workout gear as of yet to be used. Jeans, socks in a little Sephora bag so I can get to them easily. And then in this little packing cube I keep more underwear and like face flannels for washing my face. And then on the bottom shelf here at the back I've kept any kind of towels and sheets that were here when I moved in. This is my laundry bag, and then this is the box for my new phone. If we move across, I am keeping shoes, and then underneath I'm just keeping some miscellaneous items. I've got a few little like Christmas gifts which, are, which I've popped under here. The only thing I'll say is it's a bit wonky. It was wonky when I moved in. On the side corner of my wardrobe, I'm just hanging this belt that I took with me and my handbag that I use for taking out at night time. Now, the rest of my bags are being kept here in the corner at the moment. Got my day bag, this is my go-to, this is what I can fit everything I need on a daily basis into. And I always just pop that in the corner here on top of my suitcase. And then right next to it here, I've got my backpack. At the very end of my bedroom, I've got this kind of corner here, which looks a bit out of place. And there is a reason why. Now, when I was told about the room, I was told that I would have a desk here. However, before I moved in, my flatmate took the desk from here and put it into her room because she does a lot of calls for her job and she needs to be somewhere completely quiet. And she offered to move it back into my room when I moved in, but I said, you know what? I'm completely happy for you to have that workspace in your room to do your calls because that way I get to do all of my work in the upstairs area. And as someone who spent the last like year doing so much work from my bedroom in Italy, it's really nice to have the separation of sleeping space, workspace. And like upstairs, there is a pretty cool view to go with it. Now, when you first look at this window, you might not think that there's much to it. I'll admit the satellite dish isn't much to look at, but all you have to do is put your head outside. So that is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the house tour. I hope that it gave you a bit of an idea of what you could expect to get for your money. This was actually a lot harder to film than I expected. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in next week's upload. Have a great week. Take care.